A Mother's Day hatch is not a hen-pecked husband's nightmare. It's an explosion of insects early in May that brings trout to the surface and anglers to the rivers. It seems as though every case caddis in the river has decided to emerge into its adult form on the day we arrive. You first notice them flying about in a seemingly aimless flurry. Next, you look to the river and there they are again, going up and down and all about. In the likely trout holding water, they're just as numerous, floating, hopping, and plopping everywhere. On the shoreline, rocks are covered by an army of insects. Most amazing of all are back eddies, where swarms of caddis gather in mass, intent on procreation. Jack Dennis and Scott Sanchez have introduced countless anglers to the event, but they still stand in awe of the caddis hatch. The bugs are there, the fish are there, the people are there. Well, it's the first caddis hatch of the year, and it's it's a good one. I know they use a Mother's Day as the kind of the as the uh, uh, name they give yeah, this event. Yeah, it's a generalized term for it. But it is terrific. It's uh, it, it's a really a great start off of dry fly fishing for the year. It's pretty amazing the biomass of bugs out here today. It's just lousy with critter, these little critters. There's a ton of these brachis interest caddis, little case caddis. They're hatching right now. We're getting these back eddies, and there'll be like rafts of them. Okay, Scott, I'm set up for both insects. I got a March Brown right here, a little pear wolf, and then I have the uh, sparkle caddis right here, or crystal caddis with the uh, partridge wing. That should work there, nice dark body. These bugs are pretty dark, almost like kind of, kind of like a very dark olive or a dark brown, kind of peacocky type right. color. So dark body fly works pretty well, and then that little uh, Crystal flash is nice in the wing because you can tell your fly from the natural because right. they'll get lost sometimes in some of these places with all the naturals around it. Well, Scott, I would think that a caddis emerger would be uh, a right choice too. Yeah, caddis emergers work really well, and if there's something they call an everything emerger, it's kind of a modified X caddis. Yeah, it, that's a great pattern. Now, what would you uh, combine that with? I know you like to fish two flies. I use some little more visible. I mean, this is that everything emerger, it's kind of low floater. That's one of kind of a peacock color body. It's one with a dark olive body. Got like an elk hair wing on them. They got a little trilling shuck on there, like the mm -hmm. natural coming out of the shuck. So I use those kind of as the back fly. In the front, there's a few different options. A couple of really good possibilities are visible, and they're still pretty similar to the caddis. Is the old coachman trout is a great yeah. fly in this river. And then my uh, mini convertible here kind of same profile, might imitate a fluttering cat or two sets of wings, but the good strike indicator flies when you're right. fishing in choppy water or if I want to hang a nymph below it. And what I'll do sometimes early in the day, when you fish a case caddis pattern, I call it glass house caddis, but you get out there 9, 10 o'clock in the morning before it happens, this is a great fly to fish. Also something dark like a prince nymph, you know, in about a 14 is a good pattern as well. Ooh, a little sunshine here. Rain, sunshine, that's what I love about the spring. You can get the whole four seasons in one day. Oh, Snow, a, rain, sunshine. Oh, it definitely switches around. Yeah. It seems like it'll be just too easy for our dynamic duo. After all, we have Jack Dennis, the infamous ambassador of Western fly fishing, and Scott Sanchez, as good of a guide, angler, and fly tire that can be found. What we had failed to realize was that this was Jack's first trip of the year. We would discover he was a little rusty from the layoff and exhausted from an all-night drive. Like a baseball pitcher, his first couple of innings would prove to be a challenge. Uh, not a very good cat. Oh, <laughs> look at the wrong fly. <laughs> Looking at the point fly. That was a nice ease. That looked like a brown. He came up nice and slow. Well, they've definitely yeah, been yeah, taking the uh, caddis over the, uh, it's like three to one on the, uh, there, there we go. Got a little rainbow? Yeah, a little, it could be a little brown, yeah. I can tell. That one took it actually a little underneath the water, Scott. Yeah. That's cutthroat. Yeah. They're just a beautiful fish. I don't know if there's a prettier fish around than a, than a Yellowstone cutthroat. Just a nice, beautiful fish. Got to catch and release myself. I got one. There we go. 
There we go. Here he goes. Okay. When we return. It's time for you to go fishing. Get that rod out and quit rowing. I don't think it'll bother me at all. <laughs> Well, the one dropped it all up that little uh, notch up there. There's plenty of room. Oh, yeah. sir. Look, look what we got right here. We got a caddis that's uh, a lot of people don't realize when they emerge, they're going to fly away and they're going to be gone, and then they're going to come back and lay their eggs Reaching. like these insects are doing right now. And that's when they're going to get taken. They're going to yep. get taken on that emerging stage oh, or the back when they lay their eggs. Yeah, that evening and afternoon can be really good with the egg laying going on. That's when the fish, are, the, the bugs are actually in or on the water. Right. It's the most consistent dry fly fishing. Well, they're fluttering at first or hitting, dropping their eggs, and then when they die, they're going to be flat right yep. on the film. It's like a potato chip floating down to yeah. snack on. And that's why it's really important. You got to get a fly that's going to lay right in that film and that uh, merger, which you call it a merger, but it'll go either way. Yeah, you use them as a cripple. And then, I mean, a lot of times it's worth having a big bushy fly like an out your caddis because that can imitate the fluttering around. Right. So it's kind of like looking and see what the fish are doing. If there's real splatty rises, they're chasing stuff. Yeah. You know, a fluttering type caddis works real. If they're taking it real soft, but you've you know, got so many different caddis, you can have some that are emerging as the others are laying their eggs and you don't know which You never know what's going on. The clock is ticking, Scott. We got to get it before that storm gets here. Yeah. You know, it may be time to drop an emerger down there, too. Yeah, a little merger like a caddis pupa. See that fish right all the way up in here? Got some fish in pretty skinny water here. They might be wise, but I want to spook them in case there's a nice bow in there. So what do you think's happening when that's... Oh, hey, there we go. All right, Scott. Which fly did you take it on? The emerger, the everything emerger. Oh, uh, hey, that, that's it's a nice, nice little fish. rainbow. I mean, nice it's like fat fish. Oh, <laughs> I'm I'm not connecting like you are, but boy, they're really going crazy right in here now. Boy, I'll tell you, I've had two strikes now, and I've missed both of them. Well, you know that. You know, you were talking earlier about it. Uh, the whole river was sporadic at this time. Some pools, you don't have any fish rising, then all of a sudden you get in a place like this and they're going crazy. Yeah, they're definitely feeding in here. I'll tell you, this is the exciting part of fly fishing. You got a storm coming. We know when that storm hits, it's going to be over with. We're going to have to probably go nipping if we don't have a snowstorm on our face. You got another one? All right, good for you. And it's a wide. Uh oh, this is a wide. It's a mighty whitey. This one's got a serious snap. Hey, on here it. we go. I think we got. Let's see what we got here. Whitefish Derby time. But you know, this time of year. On the back fly. Whitefish on a dry can be great fun. There you go, bud. Wouldn't be the first time we were caught in the rain before the snow. Well, the fish are already wet and cold, so it doesn't really matter to them. <laughs> oh, that's better. It was not long until a windy spring shower cooled our anglers and put down the trout. We had now fished dry flies and emergers. Scott decided it was time to go down deeper. He had Jack put on his glasshouse caddis nymph. When the nymph leaves its case, it develops a pupal shell that it fills with a gas that in turn lifts the pupa to the surface. In this brief window of opportunity, between the time it's out of its protective case and it rises to the surface, trout can prey on them. Oh, that was a nice fish right up against that rock. Oh, had him! <laughs> He took the nymph. There we go. I don't know which one he got it on, but we got it on one of them. That was in tight to the rock. It could be a brown. He's acting like a brown, Scotty. We need a brown so I can have everything. And caught slam. one of everything today. Cutthroat, brown, and rainbow. Not many rivers in the West you can do that on. Really no, think about it's it. a nice mix. 
It is a nice mix. That's one of the charms of this river, isn't it? Yeah. This is a this is a nice. Oh yes, sir. Nice fish, Scott. Nice fish. That nymph's right on his nose. Nice. Hey, there we go. Look at that. He took the glass. Cat is right up against the rock like a brown trout. Big, beautiful rainbow. You can't ask for a nicer fish than that. Maybe get ready because we got a lot more coming up right here. Because the weather and the hatch had changed all day, we found nothing that worked all the time and every time. Instead, our experienced anglers embraced some of the simple entomology of the caddis fly and successfully fished all its stages of emergence. Any mother would have been proud of such a practical lesson. If you decide to come out west and try and unravel this angling odyssey, set aside plenty of time 